So nakita sa word ni Lord nga ginhatag subong. Uh, could you turn your Bibles with me to Genesis chapter 4? We will read our passage and then we will uh, spend uh, time in prayer for Pastor Ricky and the whole family nga ara subong dito sa Manila. No? Genesis chapter 4. Our passage today is found sa verses 1 to 26. But for now, basahon ko lang na yung verses 1 to 6. Encourage everyone to please stand to give reverence to the Word of God. Genesis chapter 4, verses 1 to 6. It reads, Adam lay with his wife Eve, and she became pregnant, and gave birth to Cain. She said, With the help of the Lord, I have brought forth a man. Later, she gave birth to his brother Abel. Now Abel kept flocks and Cain uh, worked the soil. Verse 3. In the course of time, Cain brought some of the fruits of the soil as an offering to the Lord. But Abel brought fat portions from some of the firstborn of his flock. The Lord looked with favor on Abel in his offering, but on Cain in his offering, he did not look with favor. So Cain was very angry, and his face was downcast. Then the Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry? Why is your face downcast? If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must master it. Let's come before the Lord in prayer. Father God, we just want to bless you, Lord, and honor you for who you are. Like the songs that we sang a while ago, your love endures forever. You are faithful, O God. Apart from your love, Lord, we could not stand before your holiness, O Lord. And we thank you for this privilege once again that you have gathered your body, Lord God, each and every one of us, saved by the blood of the Lamb, to be able to listen to your word once again, O God. And we recognize, Lord, that apart from you, Lord, we could never understand your word. And we could never apply it to our lives. Father God, we ask, Lord, of your grace that you would minister to us, Lord God, today. Speak, O God, for your servants are listening, O Lord. Lord, we also lift up to you, Pastor Ricky, Tita Marge, Lord, and their family, Lord, nga sa Manila. Lord, we pray for your comfort. We pray for your strength upon them, Lord. May your words, Lord God, bring Peace, Lord, encouragement upon their hearts, O Lord. Lord, we lift up to you the whole duration of the service. Protect us, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's all be seated. Let's clap to the Lord once again. Taktakantang ginoo. Mayong aga sa liwat. Praise God. Another Sunday. Nagkatipo naman kita. Another privilege to be able to listen and Uh, ponder upon the words of the Lord. The title of our topic of, or our sermon today is Sin Continues to Progress but God Preserves. Sin Continues to Progress but God Preserves. The last time nga ginala ko ni Lord mag-preach diri, I taught on Genesis chapter 3. And actually, this is the continuation. No? And sa aton subong uh, nga message, no, allow me to have a short recap sa inyo sa book of Genesis. And allow me to share the main idea or the theme of the book of Genesis. The book of Genesis is not just about creation. Na-share ko naman ni before, no? But actually, it's the Word of God. It's about the power of the Word of God. But the Word of God is really good, trustworthy, masaligan, and it is able to save many lives. Makaluwas. And hindi nakita ka nalang magkadto pa sa beginning, kag, kag-end sang book, no? But I know uh, many of you have already read the book of Genesis. And sa chapter 1 pa lang, brethren, we see how the power of God created the heavens and the earth in six days. Just the power of His Word. The earth that was once dark, He illuminated with His light. And He also created the greater lights to govern the day, the lesser light. The earth that was once formless, now teeming with creatures, including man, created in the image and likeness of God. 
only by the power of His Word. Amen? Everything was good. Grabe, no? Chapter 2, for those of you who have read chapter 2, man creates, or I mean God creates a garden and He places man there to enjoy fellowship with Him. The best of the best were given to man. Provision, protection, and even the suitable partner. All man had to do is to trust the Word of God, saligan siya, saligan ang iya pulong, to fellowship with Him. But God gave a command. Do you remember? Don't know manato, no? They may eat fruit from all the trees in the garden except the tree that is in the middle of the garden. Because when they eat of it, managanin matabo sila, they will surely, what? They will surely die, mapatay sila. And then, chapter 3. What happened to chapter 3, brethren? In this chapter, man sinned against God by not taking to heart or heeding the word of the Lord given to them. Man fell into sin, lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, and even pride of life. But the Lord, nakita ta si Lord, no? The first words of the Lord when man sinned was in verse 9, chapter 3, verse 9. Where are you? We see the heart of God pursuing man to redeem him. Diba, no? The whole Bible speaks about redemption. Speaks about how God in His great love want to redeem man through Christ for His glory. Adam blamed his wife. Eve blamed the serpent. God pronounced curses upon them for what they have done. But in yet, Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. Kung may isa kita ka verse nga tandaan sa Genesis, especially sa mga so good nga parts, it is Genesis 3.15, the pivotal uh, verse, no? Wherein God made a prophecy on how the seed of the woman could crush the head of the serpent. This is the prophecy looking forward to the coming Messiah. And can I know that Pastor Ricky shares about the book of Matthew. Amun yung nakita natin, ginapakita ni Lord sa ito, no? Sa book of Matthew, how Jesus came, the promised Messiah, the promised King, to shed His blood on the cross to pay the price for our sin. Amen? Ginakanta ito na kagina, how the blood of the Lamb, how the blood of Christ saves us. God made garments of, of skin for Adam and Eve to cover them. And again, a foreshadow of the covering of the blood of the Lamb. Man was banished outside the garden to prevent him from reaching out to take from the tree of life and to live forever. Now, as we enter chapter 4, kung nara mo sa inyo nga Bibles, no? Genesis chapter 4, story of kung Cain and Abel, kung makita niyo yung title sa inyo nga mga Bibles, dira, no? Let us bear in mind, guys, that this is the start of man's life outside the garden. As we study the chapter 4 sa Sininga nga Aga, ang munang ibutang ito sa mind, no? this is the start of the life of man outside the garden. In the garden, ang tugani nakita ta kagina, everything was provided. The best of the best, siling ko kagina. But now, they have to work hard. They have to toil for them to eat. The one's intimate fellowship with their Creator. Nadundaman yung natabo sa chapter 3 when they sinned against God. The, the Bible tells us that God walks in the middle of the garden, in the midst of the garden, in the cool of the day. The one's intimate fellowship was now affected by sin, resulting in curses, even death. Amo na natabo sa tao. And subong nga aga, mga utod, we will see in chapter 4 how sin continue to progress. Nagagrabi nga nagagrabi ang sala. But we will also see how the Lord God preserves the seed of the woman to carry on His plan of redemption. Excited na ko gani. Karun no? nga makalabot kita dira. Excited na ka mo? Amen? Doi ka mo gayo, humaw? No? Smile man nabi? No? So let's begin our study. Genesis chapter 4. Let's look at verses 1 and 2 sa Sininga Aga. 
So Adam or Adam lay with his wife Eve, and she became pregnant and gave birth to Cain. She said, With the help of the Lord, I have brought forth a man. Later, she gave birth to his brother Abel. Makita ta diri mga otod nga, despite of their sin, God, in His compassion, in His mercy, still enabled, no? makita nyo da ang word nga enabled, no? Enabled Adam and Eve, na makabata sila, to bear children. For what reason, brethren? To fulfill His plan of redemption. Again, balik kita dyan, pun sa Genesis 3.15. No? Hindi kita malipat sina. Wala sa may makapugong, nothing can hinder the plan of God in redeeming man. Even sin. Wala may makapugong. And the names of their children, makita taman bago lang, Cain and Abel. Now let's continue. Now Abel kept flocks and Cain worked the soil. Verse 3, In the course of time, Cain brought some of the fruits of the soil as an offering to the Lord. But Abel brought fat portions from some of the firstborn of the flock. The Lord looked with favor on Abel in his offering, but on Cain in his offering, he did not look with favor. So Cain was very angry and his face was downcast. Now we are introduced with the livelihood or the occupation of Cain and Abel. Cain worked the soil. He was a farmer. And Abel kept flocks. And in verse 3, ginahambal sa ito, in the course of time, nag-offer sila kay Lord. And sometimes nag-study ko, this question popped up sa akong mind. Who told them to bring offerings to the Lord. Sino naghambal sa ilang ang maghalad sa ginoo? Why did they naghambal? No? It was not stated here in the story in itself, passage na ton. But there is a big possibility, brethren, that it was their parents, Adam and Eve, that passed on to them, through the revelation of God, the necessity of an offering to the Lord and the details of an acceptable offering. It was passed on to them in the course of time. And what did they offer? Ano ba lang gindala nila sa ginoo? Cain, ano gindala niya, brethren? Brought what? Some of, some of the fruits of the soil. No? Vegetables, no? utan. And it was a bloodless, bloodless sacrifice. Abel, on the other hand, brought the fat portions from some of the firstborn of his flock. It's the best, no? It's blood sacrifice, no? An animal before the Lord. Now, brothers and sisters, I pray that you follow with me, no? Sa pagtoon natin subong. If we just look at the story, the story itself, it does not give us an indication that either of these differences factored into God's acceptance of Abel and rejection of Cain. Why did I hambal nga specific gid nga naghambal gid lang inoo nga ikaw tungod utan lang ginatag mo hindi ko na pagbatonon ikaw tungod sapat ginatag mo batonon ko na wala dira ginambal specifically brethren all we know and what is clear with us today that the Bible tells us in verses 4 to 5 that the Lord looked with favor. In the ESV, it says, have regard on Abel and in, in his offering. But on Cain in his offering, he did not look with favor. And we come to the, to the question, no, nga ginapamangkot, get per me, no? Why was Cain's offering not accepted? nga ah, nga wala ginbaton ang halad ni Cain. It's a question nga napamangkot siguro man ninyo no kag ako man sang nagatuon ako sini. Brothers and sisters, I want you to look at intently verses 4 and 5. Sa inyo nga mga Bibles dira. So, Abel brought fat 
portions from some of the firstborn of the flock, the Lord looked with favor on who? On Abel and his what? His offering. Next, verse 5. But on Cain and his offering, he did not look with favor. Brothers and sisters, it's not just about the offering. It's about the person. God did not look with favor on Cain and his offering. Hindi lang ang offering, but it's the person. There's something wrong in Cain, in his heart. Nga mulang reason, yung wala ginbaton sa ginoong yung offering. It's not just about the offering. It's about the person, the heart of the person. Kaya why siya with favor on Cain and his offering. And brethren, we see that it's further validated sa aton pagtuon subong sa next verses na ginambal diri. So Cain was very angry and his face was downcast. I want you to see, brethren, the progression of sin in the heart of Cain as we, as we study sa subong aga. No? There's something wrong with the heart of Cain. And if we continue our passage sa verse 7, Gambalang ginoo sa iya. If you do what is what? What is? What is right? Will you not be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must master it. Kain, kung insakto ang ginimo mo, di ba ba ko ikaw? No. Pero kung hindi insakto ang mga ginimo, no. hambal di rao, Sin is crouching at your, at your door. It desires to have you, but you must master it. There's something wrong with the heart of Cain. That is why his offering was rejected. When the Lord rejected the offering of Cain, Cain should have come to God and asked, Lord, sala galigin himo ko? Ti anong galig Lord ang dapat? How? What should I do, Lord? What is the right offering, Lord? Or he should have patterned his offering with Abel because Abel's offering was accepted. Instead, Cain responded in anger. His face was downcast. But I want us not just to focus on Cain and Abel, but also on the heart of God. Anong makita niyo sa heart ni Lord Dere, mga utod? When Cain's response was anger, his face being downcast, what is God doing? God is pursuing Cain. Cain, if you do what is right, will you not be accepted? We see the heart of God, redemptive heart of God, pursuing Cain. And while I was studying this, brethren, it's just a replay of what happened with Adam and Eve. When Adam and Eve sinned, what did God do? He kept on pursuing them. Where are you? Di na kamo. No? And same thing, ang nakatabo diri. The compassionate and merciful heart of God pursuing Cain despite of his anger and his face being downcast. Let's continue to look at verses of Scripture that would uh, help us see the heart of Cain, brothers and sisters. Could you open your Bibles to Jude chapter 1, verse 11? Grabe no, alin sa Genesis, Jod na tayo subong, <laughs> alin sa puno, pagkat sa punta. Exercise natin mga Bibles, no, para ma-taktak ng mga yabok. <laughs> Jude chapter 1, verse 11. Ara na kita. Jude chapter 1, verse 11. It says, Woe to them! They have taken the way of Cain. They have rushed for profit into Balaam's error. They have been destroyed in Korah's rebellion. This portion of Jude chapter 1 speaks about men, lawless men, who have lived in disobedience before the Lord. And we read in Jude chapter 1 verse 11, the portion or the description that tells us they have taken the way of Cain. Nagsunod sila sa mga pamaagi ni Cain. 
And brothers and sisters, what does this mean? This description refers to how these people disobediently devised, nagimuhimo sila sang ila own ways of worship, not coming to God by faith. You know what, brothers and sisters? Cain brought an offering to the Lord. But that offering is only acceptable in his own eyes, not in the eyes of God. Para lang yan sa iya, ya. Amo lang niya dalon ko eh. Para sa ako, amo niya yung tsakto mo. Pero ay sa kabalong, ay hindi to gali yung tsakto sa tubangan sang ginoo. It was not acceptable in the eyes of God. He made his own way of worship before the Lord. Diri nagapakita that there is really something wrong. There is evil in the heart of Cain. Kung mabalik kita sa Genesis chapter 4, makita pa gina natin mga utod sa verse 8. Genesis chapter 4 verse 8. Pagina, we saw how Cain responded in anger, his face downcast. And as our, our story progresses, or progress, there is a verse 8, Cain kills his brother. No? Now Cain said to his brother Abel, Let's go out to the field. While they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. Nakita niyo mga utod? Grabe no? How sin continued to progress, especially in the heart of Cain. This killing of his brother is a fulfillment, actually, of Genesis 3.15. Ano nambal sa Genesis 3.15 now? There will be an enmity between the seed of the woman and the seed of the serpent. And now it's happening. Nakatabo na siya. No, nakatabo na siya. When you say enmity, pag ilinaway, pag ginamo. And this happened to Cain and Abel. Where did Cain's sin begin? Sangin pataya yotod? No started when he responded in anger towards God in his heart. That's why his offering was rejected. Turn your Bibles, brothers and sisters, to 1 John chapter 3, verse 12. 1 John chapter 3, verse 12. The whole passage three naga talk about loving one another. And siling sa verse 12, no? Then, uh, 1 John chapter 3, verse 12. Do not be like Cain, who belong to who? Belong to the evil one. And murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his actions were evil. And his brothers were righteous. Grabe no. Diri naton makita mga utod that those who belong to the evil one will produce what? Evil actions. And those with evil actions will naturally hate those with righteous actions. The evil in Cain's heart was further revealed. No, kung magpadayon kita bala sa verse 9, when the Lord asked him, ano ganing yung pamangkot ni Lord siya sa verse 9? Di ba? Familiar gini sa aton. Where is your brother Abel? Di nang imuutod. I don't know, he replied. Am I my what? Brother's keeper? Am I my brother's keeper? Let me ask you, brothers and sisters, what kind of response is this? Ano nang klase nga response sa ginoo? This is a response of Insolence. No meaning sang insolence. No respect. No reverence. Why ay hindi akilala kung sino ginastorya ya? Tapos madala sa sang offering. Tapos ma worship siya. Grabe no. Ginarevealed ang heart ni Cain sa aton sa sining aga. The way Cain answered God shows the evil in his heart. He does not know God at all. No? Hindi akilala ang ginoo. It also further validates that he did not come to God bringing his offering by faith. Hindi. But rather, he was bringing himself. 
His offering was just a show, not really worship. Grabe no. In verse 10, the Lord said, What have you done? Listen, your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. Grabe no. It's the same how, how God confronted Adam and Eve in, in the garden wherein you should have confessed to the Lord, but wala gid. They blamed one another. Tudloan ay sila. Kay kina mo man eh. Instead of confessing to the Lord, coming to the Lord, asking for forgiveness, Cain continued to reveal the evil in, that was in his heart. Am I my brother's keeper? Grab you know. Now, how about Abel? Abel, on the other hand, came to God through faith. Let's go to Hebrews. Hebrews 11, verse 4. Hebrews 11, verse 4. Hebrews 11, verse 4, it says, By faith, Abel offered God a better sacrifice than Cain. By faith, he was commended as a righteous man with God spoke well of his offering. And by faith, he still speaks even though he is dead. The offering of Abel was founded in faith. Grab you know? Abel, brothers and sisters, was not accepted because of the offering itself, but because of faith. The reason why Abel was able to offer an offering that was acceptable to God was because of faith. Tungod sa pagtuo. And the reason why, why Abel was able to do the right thing before the Lord was also because of faith. Later on, we will apply it sa ato ni mga kabuhin. No? For now, let's just continue the story. Let's go back to Genesis chapter 4. And let's see what happened to Cain. Genesis chapter 4. Ay, nakita sa verses 11 to 16. In this portion, God cursed Cain. And it says in verse 11, Now you are under a curse and driven from the ground which opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. Verse 12, When you work the ground, it will no longer yield its crops for you. You will be what? A restless wanderer on earth. Grabe no? Ang, ang obra ni Cain was a worker of the ground. And ang curse na ginatag sa ginoo sa iya, na ang ground ko no, sa verse 12, will no longer yield its crop for you. Do you remember the, the curse that was given to man in Genesis 3, verse 17? Balik tabla, isol tabla kadali, mga otod. Siling sa verse 17 of chapter 3. To Adam he said, because you listened to your wife, ate from the tree about which I commanded you, you must not eat of it. Curse is the ground because of you. Through painful toil you will eat of it all the days of your life. It will produce thorns and thistles for you and you will eat the plants of the field. Ang kay Kenya, sobra pa gidya. Ang kay Kenya, hindi gidya ko no. No? Kung mag-work sa kono sa ground, it will no longer yield its crops for you. Hindi kaya magmunga. Ang kaya damya, medyo okay, okay pa to, kay, no Toil, painful toil, no thorns, thistles, uh, thistles. Pero si Kenya, hindi kaya magmunga. Ang saya. And he will become a restless what wanderer on earth. Now let, let us look at the response of Cain sa verse 13. Cain said to the Lord, My punishment is more than I can bear. Subra-subra naman niya, Imo Lord. Subra-subra na niya. Today you are driving me from the land and I will be hidden from your presence. 
I will be a restless wanderer on the earth. And whoever finds me will what? Will kill me. Ano makita natin sa response ni Cain diri mga utod? Instead of again coming to the Lord for mercy, Cain complains. Cain grumbles. Reklamo diya po na. Sabi no? Sobra na ni mo yung Lord. No? Hindi ko na yung masarangan. Hindi ko na yung maguanta. Nga pinagin hatag mo sa akin. No? But as we continue, tanawan niyo bala ang verse 15. But the Lord said to him, Not so. If anyone kills Cain, he will suffer vengeance seven times over. Then the Lord put a mark on Cain, ginmarkahan siya, so that no one who found him would kill him. So Cain went out from the Lord's presence, lived in the land of Nod, east of Eden. Ano makita niyo sa verse 15, brothers and sisters? What did God do? Again, it's mercy. It's mercy. Why? Ang ba ni Lord siya? Hindi. Ang mapatay sa imo, no? pinahan seven times over. Balusan. Dari makita ta Japan ang ang, ang protection sa Ginoo ang iya kaluoy no ang iya mercy kay Cain butangan ta ka marka no para hindi kanila pagpatyon no kaluoy Japan sa Ginoo in yet verse 16 tells us that Cain instead of thanking God instead of appreciating this mercy still went away went out from the presence of the Lord and this word brethren is it's rejection Cain rejects God. Nakat siya. Bayaan niya. Went away from the presence of the Lord. And as we continue the story, verse 17, here we see the generations of Cain and sin continue to progress. Cain lay with his wife and she became pregnant, gave birth to Enoch, Cain was then building a city and he named it after his son, Enoch. To Enoch was born Erad, and er Erad was the father of Mehuael, and Mehuael was the father of Methusael, and Methusael was the father of Lamech. Lamech married two women. Now, I think this is the first record of a man marrying two women. And for me, brethren, this is This is a picture of wickedness. Sin continue to progress. One named Ada, other Zila. Ada gave birth to Jabal. He was the father of those who live in tents, raised livestock. His brother's name was Jubal. He was the father of all who played the harp and the flute. Zila also had a son, Tubal Cain, who forged all kinds of tool out of bronze and iron. To Balcain's sister was Naama. Now, verse 23. Lamech said to his wives, Ada and Zila, Listen to me, wives of Lamech. Hear my words. I have killed a man for wounding me, a young man for enduring me. If Cain is avenged seven times, then Lamech, 77 times. Now, what is Lamech doing here? He was boasting. Mati ka mo. Maging patay ko ito nga pamatanon for wounding me. Again, a picture of the progress of sin, of wickedness. No? Grabe gid. And sa aton nga story, it seems that all hope is gone. Okay, patay na si Abel mo. Diyan pa bing magwa ang righteous line. Diyan pa bing magwa ang seed of the woman. And yet we see in verses 25 to 26, how God preserves the righteous line to fulfill His plan of redemption. In verse 25, Adam lay with his wife again, and she gave birth to a son and named him what? Seth. Saying, God has granted me another child in place of Abel since Cain killed him. Seth also had a son and he named him Enosh. And I, I love this part. At that time, men began to call on the name of the Lord. Grabe, no? 
Sa lingko, it seems all hope is gone when Abel was killed by Cain. But nothing can hinder the plan of God in redeeming mankind. Amen? He enabled Adam to bear a son, Seth, and Enosh. And at that time, siling diri, men began to call on the name of the Lord. To call on the name of the Lord means to cry out. To cry out for help. To call. To worship. To know the Lord. No. Amunin siya ang makita natin diri. And brethren, if we just end here, paano tayo ma-apply sa ito niya kabuhi? No? But before applying it to us, I want us to first look at how is this applied to the original recipients of the book or original readers? Sino gani? Sino gani original? Gid nga, nga nagbaton sa sining uh, sulat sa Genesis? Sino gani mga utod? Si? Sino gani? Mga Israelites when they were in the wilderness. What is the story of Cain and Abel showing the Israelites while they were wandering in the wilderness. God, in His compassion and mercy, heard the cry of the Israelites in Egypt. No, Diyo tayong uh, review no, sa history sa Israel. So He delivered them from their slavery in Egypt for pilaka years, gani mga utod? 430 years. To bring them to a land flowing with milk and honey where they will worship and serve Him. God showed them His great power no? by delivering them from the hand of their enemies, providing for them everything they needed in the desert, protecting them and guiding them. But like Cain, did the Israelites do what was right before the eyes of God? Yes or no? No. Ano ginimot nila? Nakita nilang gahom sang Diyos, they've seen the greatness and the power of their God, saving them, redeeming them. But what was their response? They did not come to God by faith like Cain. They did not trust the word of God. When the Lord said to them, I will deliver you and bring you to a land flowing with milk and honey where you will worship and serve me. But pila pa lang kabulan? Wala sila tubi. Mangkot sila. Is God among us? You remember, kinsya na ni Pastor Ricky sa aton? On one of his sermons. Is God among us? No? Grabe gid. Instead of trusting the Lord, they continued to sin and rebelled against God. They continued to grumble like Cain. They failed to see the mercy and compassion that God showed them even in the desert. Grabe gid. Yet, what did God do? God continued to pursue them. Naguntat bala si Lord sa pagpadayon nga pag perso sa ila? Wala. God continued to show compassion upon them. For 40 years, manna in the desert, quail, pillar of cloud by day, and pillar of fire by night. The Lord was with them all throughout. And yet, they, re they responded in grumbling like Cain, rejection like Cain, who went away from the presence of the Lord. Grabe, no? The Israelites should have trusted and listened to the word of God. When the Lord disciplined them, they should submit and repent of their sin, return to God, and yet, like Cain, they continued in their unbelief. That is why, karon makita ta sa Hebrews, they never entered the rest that God promised. Wala kid. Joshua, Caleb, those who trusted in the Lord, they entered the promised land, but those generations nga wala nagbelieve sa ginoo, who continued to grumble, they never entered the promised land. Wala sila kasulod. Now, Brothers and sisters, if that is what the story of Cain and Abel na ginapakita sa mga Israelites, how about us today? What is the story of Cain and Abel showing us today? 
sa aton. Hindi ka lang mga keg, amo na? Or, amo lang itong ginpakita sa aton gagina? No. Cain did not do what was right before the Lord and he was cursed. How about us? Let us ask ourselves, did we also do what was right before the Lord? Di ba? Hindi. No. We are sinners. Wicked sinners. And it does, it, hindi lang siya nga ng act, brethren, our very core, the very core of our hearts, apart from Christ, we are sinners. No? We are depraved. Like Cain, sa tiling ko kagina, we also did not do what was right before the Lord. And we are deserving of punishment. We are deserving of the wrath of God. The following verses na ipakita na kung sa inyo seems familiar, but I pray that the Lord will convict us of our need of Him this morning. Could we turn our Bibles to Romans chapter 3, verses 10 to 18 and 23. Romans 3, verses 10 to 18 and 23. Romans 3, verses 10 to 18, tag 23. Siling sa verse 10, As it is written, There is no one righteous. Wala sing matarong, not even one. No one who understands. No one who seeks God. All have turned away. They have together become worthless. There is no one who does good, not even one. Their throats are open graves. Their tongues practice deceit. The poison of vipers is on their lips. Their mouth are full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Ruin and misery mark their ways. In the way of peace, they do not know. There is no fear of God before their eyes. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. A very familiar passage, but you think about it, brothers and sisters, take away Christ in the picture, this is who we are. This is who we are. No? Apart from Christ. And I love the word fall short. No? For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Do you know what? Kung anong meaning sang word nga fall short? In the original translation, to fall short means to lack, to fall behind, to fail. Nintindihan natin? It means that whatever we do, kung sa ilonggo pa, kulang. Bisan ano nga pagpaningwa natin, kulang Japon. No matter how hard you try to be like Cain and, and approach God on your own terms, you can never do that because it will always fail. Kulang. Lord, aring offering ko, Lord. Daw mayo man ko nga tao, Lord. Pisan man ko sa simbahan. Lord, aring dala ko, Lord. Pero anong, anong mahimu sini sa isa ka perfect, holy, and righteous God? All these efforts apart from Jesus is nothing, are nothing. We will always fail. We will always fall behind. Kulang na per me. And, I, and as I was preparing, kabulo ko na ng prayer sa heart ko, Father, I pray that you will show us ang need namun sa imo. You know what? What is dangerous sa aton subong? Because we have so many ways of, we, are, we have invented, man has invented so many ways of coming to God. Nga why siya kabalo nga ang ginoo, may aras ang ginapakita, nga insakto nga pamaagi, nga magpalapit kita sa iya. Tagpahagi lang din kay Jesus. Karon makita ta na. No? And for us who say that we are believers, let us ask ourselves, do we still trust in our own righteousness as we come to God? Or in Christ alone? Di ba? Ang kanta ta na kagina? No? 
we will always fall short. We will always fall short. Ang muna ang pray ko nga makita natin subong nga makita ta ang atong need sa ginoo. Even Christian ka na subong, ay pray nga makita mo na, makita ko na, nga kinanlan mo ang ginoo sa imo kabuhi. No? I think I, sh- I shared this, this verse sa nagligad, no? Isaiah 64 verse 6. But for those nga hindi pa familiar sin eh, please open your Bibles. Isaiah 64 verse 6. Isaiah 64 verse 6. All of us have become one who is unclean. And all our righteous acts are like what? Filthy rags. We all shrivel up like a leaf and like the wind our sins sweep us away. I think I shared this sa nagligad sa lingko, no? The, the word filthy rags in the ESV is polluted garment. And you know what? This filthy rag is what was used during the time of Israel as a menstrual cloth. Nagamit nila sa ilang menstruation. And how dirty is that? And before the eyes of God, everything we do apart from Christ is sa matas ang ginoo, doa mo niyo, higko nga trapo. No? Higko nga trapo sa yatubangan. Everything that we try, no? kung magsali kita sa aton nga reliyon, kung magsali kita sa aton kagalingon nga buhat, ang tanan ni waywa ay sa tubangan sa ginoo. No? It is not enough to please the holy and righteous God. Hindi siya acceptable na offering sa ginoo. Brothers and sisters, what's the point here? We can never approach God on our own terms. Taliwat, we can never approach God on our own terms. Kanami nga man, sa Genesis chapter 4, in the story of Cain and Abel, God showed us the right way of coming to Him. Ano ang ginimo ni Abel? Number one, he came to God by faith. Number two, he gave the right sacrifice. So what we cannot come to God on our own terms, it must be by faith. And number two, there should be a right sacrifice before a holy God. And I'm afraid, bederen, kagkasubo nga man, ang duwan nga butang hindi niya lin sa aton. Sino makatag sini sa aton? Si Jesus. Si Jesus lang gid, no? Open your Bibles to Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6. Kaginagin basa ta ang verse 4 about Abel. No? Hebrews 11 verse 6. If you have time later on sa balay niyo, basahan niyo bilang Hebrews 11. It's full of people who walk With God by faith. So, links of verse 6. Without faith, it is what? Impossible. Can you say the word impossible? No? Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to Him must believe that He exists and that He rewards those who earnestly seek Him. No faith. We can never come to God without faith. Ang muna natabo kay Cain eh. Palapit sa Sagino, oh. Pero wala man sa Galigapate. Daladala lang siya sa offering. That is why, why again, Baton? No. But Abel came to God by faith. Nakita tagina sa verse 4. Two things sa liwat mga utod. Faith and the right sacrifice. Din mahalin ang right sacrifice. Or I mean, who is the right sacrifice? Who is the perfect sacrifice? Jesus. Siya. No? Siya ang perfect sacrifice. Turn your Bibles with me to Hebrews chapter 10, verses 1 to 18. Medyo laba ni siya, no? So bear with me. Hindi ko pwede up doon ang passage kay mas hindi tamayin sindihan. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 1 to 18. And 
Samtang ginabasa tani, I want you to picture out in your mind the Old Testament system of giving a sacrifice to the Lord or offering a sacrifice to the Lord. Para nga maintindihan siya naton. Hebrews chapter 10, let's start sa verse 1. The law is only a shadow of the good things that are coming, not the realities themselves. For this reason, it can never by the same sacrifices repeated endlessly year after year make perfect those who draw near to worship. So ang mga sapat, gali hindi ito yung maka, makahugas sa ngila ng sala. Siling sa verse 2, If it could, would they not have stopped being offered? For the worshippers would have been cleansed once for all and would no longer have felt guilty for their sins. But those sacrifices are an anim- annual reminder of sin because it is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. Therefore, when Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you prepared for me. With burnt offerings and sin offerings you were not pleased. Then I said, Here I am. It is written about me in the scroll. I have come to do your will, O God. First he said, Sacrifices and offerings, burnt offerings and sin offerings you did not desire nor were, were you pleased with them, although the law required them to be made. Verse 9, Then he said, Here I am. I have come to do your will. He sets aside the first to establish the second. And by that will, no? ano yun ang will? We have been made holy through what? The sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Hallelujah. Sabi, no? The right sacrifice. Sino naghatag para sa aton? Si Jesus. And it must be received by faith. Kaya mula ni ang acceptable sa ginoo. No? And Christ did it once for all. Kaysa lang. No? Sa so, of verse 11, Today, every priest stands and performs his religious duties Again and again, he offers the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. But when this priest, sino ni nga priest? Sino ni? Si Jesus had offered for all time one sacrifice for sins. He sat down on the right hand of God. Since that time, he waits for his enemies to be made his footstool because by one sacrifice, he has made perfect forever those who are being made holy. Can we place verse 14 sa projector? Ari siya, no? Grabe mga utod, no? Jesus, siya ang priest, siya man ang sacrifice. Hindi mo agigitanan para lang sa aton. Grabe si Jesus. And tanawa ko na nung ipikto sa ginimo ni Jesus sa verse 14. In one verse, kumplito siya, nga aman. Tungod ko no sa isa ka sacrifice by one sacrifice he has made perfect forever. Those who believe in Jesus in his blood in that sacrifice here is our position before Christ. We are made perfect because of the blood of Jesus. But hindi lang siya nagauntat dira mga utod. This verse also speaks about the process that God is working in our lives every day. He made perfect forever those who are what? Being made holy. Nakita natin mga utod? Grabe no? Tungod sa ginimo ni Jesus, sa tubangan sang ginoo, sa tubangan sang ginoo, hindi nakita ang makita ya, kundi ang ginimo ni Kristo. And because of that, our position before Christ is perfect. Perfect. But every day, He is working in us to make us like Him. To make us holy. Indeed, that the sacrifice of Jesus is complete and sufficient. 
I pray nga makita ito na subong. Hindi mo na kinanlan nga ikaw pang maningwa sa kagalingon mo. No? Hindi na ikaw kompleto na ang ginhimo ni Kristo para sa aton. Saliganta. No? Saliganta ang ginhimo ni Kristo para sa aton. No? We are made holy by the sacrifice of Jesus. Siling sa verse 15, kung narapa ka mo dira, sa, sa Hebrews chapter 10, the Holy Spirit also testifies to, uh, to us about this. First, He says, This is the covenant I will make with them. After that time, says the Lord, I will put my laws in their hearts and I will write them on their minds. Then He adds, Their sin and lawless acts I will remember no more. Grabe, no? Ang ko na nung ma-response nyo diri. Pero kung para sa, sa imo, di rin ang nagapong kaw, wala, do, sa wala lang ini, I pray that the Lord will convict our hearts. Grabe nga, grabe nga, nga gugmang yung pakita, sang ginoo. Wala ilang kita, gin, gin made perfect, nag-work pa sa saton everyday sa aton life, kaginabutang niya pa ang iya mga pulong sa aton tagipusoon. Pagi sa Holy, Holy Spirit. Sino nag-remind sa imo sa lawadlaw sa pulong sa Diyos? Ikaw? Hindi. Ang ginoo. Kung walang ginoo, parehos lang sa kalibutan. Take away Christ from our lives, from the so pictures ng aton kabuhi. We will be as carnal as the world, as sinful as the world. Tungod lang yun kay Kristo mo. Tungod lang yun kay Kristo. No? Nga mapapaminsa ta parte sa ginoo, tungod lang yun kay Kristo. No? And ang baladiriyo sa verse 17, their sin and lawless acts I will remember no more. Grabe, no? Hallelujah. Indeed, the blood of Christ is sufficient for us. Kung narapa ka mo sa Hebrews, turn with me to Hebrews 12. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 18 to 28. Hebrews 12, 18 to 28. Before we read this, I want you to picture out again the old covenant. Ano ning old covenant? The old covenant between God and the Israelites dito sa Mount Sinai. Do you remember sa Exodus no nga uh, why may makapalapit sa Mount Sinai? Every time Moses would go up there and a cloud would cover and, and God would speak to, to Moses, give the commandments, Ang mga Israelites, hindi sila kapalapit sa Mount Sinai. Bisan sapat, magpalapit to, mapatay. No, they are restricted, palayo sila because of the holiness of God. Grabe gid. No? And basa ko na to ng verse 18 with that in mind. Verse 18 to 28. We pray that the Lord will make us understand this passage. So sa verse 18, You have not come to a mountain that, that can be touched and that is burning with fire to darkness, gloom, and storm. Verse 19, to a trumpet blast or to such a voice speaking words that those who heard it beg that no further word be spoken to them. Gamba lang sa relights mo, Moses, maluoy ka, hindi lang pagpastorya ang ginawa sa amun. Ikaw lang storya sa ila, sa iya. Nakulbaan kami sa iya. Ang muna sitwasyon sa Israelites ang una. And then, siling sa verse 20, because they could not bear what was commanded. If even an animal touches the mountain, it must be stoned. Verse 21, The sight was so terrifying that Moses said, I am trembling with fear. Amunin sa unang sitwasyon nila. But verse 22, But you have come to Mount Zion, to the heavenly Jerusalem, the city of the living God. You have come to thousands upon thousands of angels in joyful assembly to the church of the firstborn whose names are written in heaven. You have come to God, the judge of all men, to the spirits of righteous men made perfect. Verse 24, brothers and sisters. To who? To Jesus. To Jesus, the what? The mediator ang nagapatunga of a new covenant and to the sprinkled blood that what? speaks a 
better word than the blood of Abel. Tungod kay Kristo, you know what? The way to God has been opened by faith. And we could come now to God through Jesus as our mediator. Because the blood of Jesus speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. Anong bot siling on sini? When Abel died, siling sa Genesis 4, ang iya blood ang bali, Lord nag-speak pa. Anong gina-speak sang blood ni Abel? The blood of Abel speaks of vengeance. But you know what? The blood of Christ? The blood of Christ speaks what? Forgiveness. The blood of Christ speaks redemption. The blood of Christ speaks adoption for each and every one of us who put our faith in Him. Grabe, no? Grabe, gid ka, katahom, kakusog, kagamhanan sa ngaton nga Diyos. Kaya ya kita lawason, bisan ka imposible, gid. Hindi kita dapat lawason mo. Hindi kita ya dapat ya. Munari ka di subong kag para sa imo ko galingon, mayo ka nga tao. Masubo kay hindi na tuod. At the very core of our hearts, we are wicked apart from Christ. Indeed, that the blood of Jesus speaks a better word than the blood of Abel, the new covenant in Christ. You know what? Every time we take communion, it speaks of the new covenant. We remember how the blood of Christ was shed for us. That piece of bread, that piece of cup, we remind kita sang body, kag blood ni Christ, eh, the new covenant for all of us. Una, every time communion kita, hindi lang nasaya nga daw. I mean, I mean anisli, sang gamay ko, no? Pagkita ko na, bako, doon di mo ko na mabusog, man. Of course, not about that, eh. No? Dito pag-ibutang sa pasapayan lang ang communion. It's a beautiful reminder for us of what our Christ has done. Now, because of of what He had done on the cross for us, now we can come to God. Now our sins have been washed away. Now we can worship. We can bring an offering to the Lord like Abel because of Christ. No? This and many more, brethren, wala kita oras. Parang hambalo ng tanan nga binipisyo sang dugo ni Kristo para sa atun. It's for you to to search in, your, in the Bible, in, in the Word of God, every day sang imo kabuhi. So what is your response? What is your response to this great love that the Father has given us, sending His Son to shed His, His blood for us? Ano ang atong nga response diri? Kung nara pa ka mo sa Hebrews, gaman diya po, no? sa verse, chapter 12, sugpunan ta to sa verse 25, Hebrews 12, verse 25. See to it, ano ang baldiriyo? That you do not refuse Him who speaks if they did not escape. Sino ni? Mga Israelites sa wilderness. If they did not escape when they refuse Him who warned them on earth, how much less will we if we turn away from Him who warns us from heaven? Kunari ka ni subo kang nabatian mo ni, tapos i-reject mo si Lord, i-reject ta si Lord, this is a warning for us. No? Makulbaan kita. Abi na to, nang ginoo na to, nagapakitlo, oy, batunan ako, patihin ako. Bisan hindi ka magpati sa buong, ang Diyos huwag nagalain. Hari sa Japon. No? Nagapungko sa iyang atrono. Na dapat, simbahon. Kagsubong nagatawag siya sa tagsa-tagsa sa aton, nga pati yan ang ginimuya sa cross para sa aton. Anong response mo diri? Ang ginambal sa aton, subong diyo, do not refuse him speak. Bisa ng Israelites yan, eh, nga, wala, nga nag-reject sa ginoo, wala naka-escape, how much more kita? How much more kita diri, subong? Siling diri, verse 28, Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom, that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful, and so worship God acceptably with reverence and awe, for our God is what? A consuming fire. I pray that God will bring upon our hearts 
that, that view of holiness kung ano kabalaan ang Diyos. Halipat na kita sinang mo. I really pray that God will do something in our life that He will make us see how holy He is. Sa itong mga kabuhi. Kasi ano, do, kasubok na do, kapasapayan na lang bala sa nga itong pagtanaw sa ginoo. Paras na lang bala kay Cain bala nga do, wala bala sing pagtaha. Such insolence without reverence. We forgot kung ano kadako kagagamhana ng atong nga Diyos sa atong mga buhay. And I know nga bisan, bisan sino din magwali kung magligid man di siya, hindi man na makabulig. Kaya ang ginoom lang makatransform sa atong heart. No? Every time someone stands here in the pulpit and preaches the word, ang trust na mo, naral lang kay Lord. Kaya siya mo lang ang makawork sa atong tagipusoon. So, how can we res- respond? Anong response na atong diri? Believe. Believe. Romans 10, verse 9 to 13. Ano ginambal sa aton dira? Romans 10, 9 to 13. Kung narapaka mo sa inyo nga mga Bibles, if you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified. It is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. As Scripture says, Anyone who believes in Him will never be put to shame. Kung magpati ka sa ginoon, hindi ka mawian. For there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all and richly blesses all who call on Him. Take note sa mga utod. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Do you remember on Genesis 4 kagina, the, the last part? When the Lord preserved the line of Adam. Seth, Enosh. And from that time, ano ginimo sa mga tao? People began to what? Call upon the name of the Lord. Again, to call means to cry for help. To cry out. And ano ginamba sa book of Romans, sa buong sa aton? Call upon the name of the Lord. Anong, anong nakita ta sa buong hao? Nakita ta sa buong hao sa aton lang, we cannot come to God. Kung wala sang faith, kung sang insakto, nga sacrifice, nga hara lang kay Kristo. So ano ginatawag ni Lord sa buong saton? Call upon Him. Bistan sa bangko mo sa buong, call upon Him. Lord, luwas ako. Luwas ako, Lord. Makasasala ko kung hindi mo ka pagluwasun. Wala, wala, good Lord. Patay ko, Lord. Patay ko sa sala. Si parar ko sa imo. Kagapon sa youth, nag, nag Mark chapter 1 kami, we're in the part nga arabala ang leper. Yan ang balsang leper sa kay Jesus. Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Ano ang ni Lord? Kanami, isang pag-ambal ni Mark mo, ang ambal niya. No? Si Lord Jesus, you know, reached out His hand with compassion and said, I am willing. I am willing. No? Willing yung ginoo. Call upon His name. Call upon Jesus. Repent and call upon the name of the Lord. Next, sa pagkita ka application sa aton subong, if by grace you have already called upon the name of the Lord, and by His grace you have believed, live a life of worship. Live a life of worship, brothers and sisters. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Another portion where the Word of God encouraged us to offer our bodies as living sacrifice. Romans 12, verses 1 and 2. Subong nga nag-believe ka na sa ginoo, subong nga nag-call ka sa iyang ngalan, siya mo na dya po na nag-work out sa aton mga kabuhi. So Romans 12, verses 1 and 2. Chiling ni Paul dira. Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to what? To? Offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Sa ibang nga version, acceptable worship. Mga utod, acceptable worship, gali sa ginoo, siling sa Romans, diyo, ang paghalad ta sa atun lawas as living sacrifice. Ang muna gali ang sacrifice, diri nga ginabato niya. And brethren, dita pag-i-miss out, and this is in view of God's mercy. 
chapter 1 to 11 of the book of Romans, first it speaks of how sinful man is. It speaks of the love and grace of God. Faith. No? And in view of all that, sang kaluoy kagugma sang Diyos, bisan nga makasasala kita, tungod sina, in view sa sina, i-offer ta nung lawas ta as living sacrifice. You know what? The word offer means, to offer means, to stand by, to, to put at disposal, to dedicate, to devote. I remember watching those movies, bala nga mga enlisted armies or navy seals, bala nga wherein, wherein their captain or general would call them, bisan may ginahimu sila nga lain, kabalo sila yan, they are, they are at the disposal sang ilang nga government. Tawaganan sila yan, himos da yun, report da yun sa duty. No, amo na ding word nga offer eh. Stand by ka bala per meow, Lord. Nga akong lawas, no? Do we treat our bodies as something that is consecrated or on standby or at the disposal of God? Brothers and sisters, hindi lang sa simbahan, ha? hindi lang sa church. Ha? Kaya ang pinakadako nga test sa pag-offer ta sa bodies naton as living sacrifice, hindi lang diri sa simbahan, kahapos lang di pero pagwa natun, no? Sa aton nga mga kwarto, kung kita na lang isa, sa tubangan sa aton nga cellphone, sa computer natun, kung diin man kita, are we treating our bodies as something that is at the Lord's disposal? What we do with our eyes, our hands, our feet, all the parts of our body, is it an act of worship to God? No? Mga utod, si Kenya para sa iya ya gindalayang offering kun ano yang sa mataya intakto pero subong na tudluan kita sang pulong sang Dios nga amo ni gali ang pleasing tag acceptable sa Ginoo nga in view sa iya mercy nga ngaton lawas maging halad sa iya you know what the word nga ginambal dira ni Paul sa ila sa chapter 12 ambal dira oh offer your bodies as a living sacrifice Buhi siya tuod, pero sacrifice. Ano ba si Lingon sini? The Christian life is a life of dying to self every day. Buhi ka, pero ang gwa do patay ka. Ano man? No, buhi ka, pero do patay ka. Ano ba si Lingon? No. Like for example, ara ka sa office mo. Sa, sa mo na office, for example. No? Hindi ka di mapunggan. May mga kumod, mga reklamo. Bago naman nga patakaran. Amo ni. I'm speaking for myself, ha? This week, amun ang experience ko. And, ikaw, do matugda ka man, ako do ma-intra man, pero do ka namin man bila amot sa, sa garot nila, pero kabalo ka, Lord, hindi na ni dapat ang amun eh. Ginbago mo na ko eh. I mean, every day you are dying to yourself. When all or tanan sila da, may ginahimo sila that is displeasing to God, nag-back nag away ka kanilang sila ni Lord, buligi ko. You are dying to yourself every day. The Christian life is a life of dying, taking up the cross and following Jesus. Of course, we cannot do that on our own strength. That is why we come to God every day. Lord, buligi ko. No? We die to ourselves every day as a living sacrifice. In the Old Testament, they slaughter an animal, burnt offerings as a sacrifice. Today, in our case, it is us. Are, we are the living sacrifice. No, bisan diin kita, bisan sinupod naton sa skwilahan, how we deal with our business, our homes, our work, our school, siling ko kagina, we die to ourselves every day. No? Mga utod, nambali ni Permi ni Pastor, no? Pero ang dako nga testing sa aton sa tod lang, man, di as sa bado mo. Ang Domingo, yung kapos lang sini. No, Domingo ka, post nga mag, mag kuan kita bala, mag, ma, makita sa mga otod naton nga okay kita. Pero man, di kagsabado, to sa to sa third day nga wala, so may makakita sa aton nga upod sa simbahan, amun lang dako nga test kit sa aton mga otod. No, we, may we follow Christ even in those days. No, hindi lang sa ministries naton. And let me speak to my fellow workers, no, nga ari diri subong. Sa pag-alagad naton sa Ginoo, Ang pag-alaga, tabala sa iya, parehos man kay Cain. Now we just bring the offering uh, 
para sa aton ay acceptable, but we do not serve God by faith. We do not serve God by trusting His righteousness. It will never be acceptable kay God. It will never be. And encourage my fellow workers, diri, no? let us serve God by faith. Let us serve God trusting His righteousness. Let us be living sacrifices day by day, mga utod. No? Siling sa verse 2, Romans 12 man dyan po, no? Do not conform to the pattern of this world. Another acceptable worship to the Lord, hindi lang nga living sacrifice kita, pero hindi ito magsunod sa kalibutan. No? To conform, no, means to fashion in accordance to. Sino sa inyo di gabake? No? May mga gabake di? Kung anong shape sa inyo, mga baking uh, thing, ano, ano tawag na, huwag ko nakabalo, no? Kung star na siya, pagbutang mo sa ingredients, da, ang magwa da, ang output, star man. Ang muna ginambal, sa ginuusap mong sa aton, hindi kita magsunod, hindi kita magconform sa patterns ng kalibutan. As one who has been shown mercy by God, we cannot go back to the life we once had before. Let us ask the Lord for the strength to live this new life that He has given us. Amen? Do not conform to the pattern of this world. Um, sa so youth, nag-genesis kami, no? And naglabot kami sa point nga grabe man, grabe man ang, ang working ni Lord sa life ni Noah, no? Imagine, sa iya generation, siya lang gid kuno ang righteous. And imagine Noah walking with God with all the people around him doing things nga hindi makapaymaya sa ginoo. Is how we make that reason nga ah, mag-go with the flow na lang ko, huwag kong mahimo, damo di sila mo. Why kung may mo? Pero si Noah, paano si Noah? How about Enoch who walked with God? How about Jesus? Jesus was persecuted even sa, sa iya own village. And yet he continued to follow his father. And this Jesus is living in us. No? Siling ganit sa Book of Romans, no? Parehos ko nga si Jesus in banhaw sa pagkamatay. Kita man are able to live a new life because of Jesus. Amen, brothers and sisters? No, we have the power of Christ in us. We can live a new life because of the blood of Jesus. No? When we share of our struggles, kis agi na highlight, ano? Ito, man gid, eh. Budlay man gid, magkabuhay bilang Kristuhan nun. Pero kakalipat kita, eh. We lose sight of the power of the grace of God at work in us. But the grace of God teaches us to say no to every ungodliness. Brethren, let us not forget of the power of the cross sa itong mga kabuhi. No? Kung grabe ang lagas ang sala, kung grabe man ang, ang wickedness sa kalibutan, mas grabe ang gahom sa Diyos na ginpakita sa cross. Let us meditate upon that day by day. Be transformed by the renewing of your minds. To be transformed means to be changed. And anong maka-change sa aton? Anong maka-change sa aton, brothers and sisters? So, so let's share ni Pastor din sa aton, no? It's the Word of God. You know what? Transformation, only God can do it. Only His Word can do it. Transformation could not, could not come with our spending hours and hours sa aton ng mga Netflix. Transformation could not come spending hours and hours no, sa mga social media natin. No, transformation can only come by sitting down at your desk every day, spending time with the Word. No, not rushing and asking God with a humble heart, Lord, speak to me, Lord. Speak to me. Ara kami sa sa process, sa uh, youth nga nag-prepare kami lessons para sa camp. One of the lessons na gina-prepare namun is uh, pray with us, no? It's about social media. You know what? Believers who are here, every time we enter the social media, bear into mind that we are in spiritual warfare. Siling sa Ephesians chapter 6, no? our battle is not against flesh and blood, but against powers, principalities, rulers. No? Uh, ang time, I mean, Netflix in itself, 
technology is a blessing, no? But you know what? Ang hours na ginaspenta dira, kisa ginakawat, yun na ang, ang window of time that we should be praying. That window of time that we should be praying for the church, for our pastor, for one another, for the nation. We, are, we should have been praying for our hearts. That window of time, magin kuwa sina, no? ginkawat na sa aton. If we are not careful, brothers and sisters, if we are not careful, these are entertainment. These are entertainment. Siling ko kagina, and it's a blessing, man. But what is our priority? What counts most did sa aton mga kabuhi? Brothers and sisters in Christ. No? Transformation, again, could only come through God and His Word. Amen. As we end, kasi ni nga, nga aga, no? Isa pa nga, sila nga ginambal ni, ni, ni God kay Cain, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must rule over it. This will be a never-ending battle against sin. But Jesus has won it all. Para sa ngayon, Again, Let's always come to God by faith and with the right sacrifice. Sino nga right sacrifice? Jesus. Only Jesus. Let's pray. Hallelujah. Blessed be your name, O God. Let's just thank the Lord for the blood of Christ, what He has done upon our lives. Lord, we thank you, we glorify your name, we magnify your name for who you are, Lord, and what you have done. Lord, we pray that you will continue, Lord God, to transform our hearts that we may see, we may respond to this great love that you have shown on the cross for us, O Lord, that our lives will be a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to you. Again, O God, we recognize that apart from your working upon our lives, we are nothing, O oh Lord. Thank you for your word. I lift up to you, my brothers and sisters who are here, O oh Lord. Ikaw gil padayon magahikot sa amon mga kabuhi. Ikaw gil padayon, Lord God, maga hatag sa amon, Lord, sa mga tagipusoon. Padayon nagasik sa imo by faith, O oh Lord. Padayon na nagasalig lang git sa imo. Pag sa imo mga pulong. Ang tanan, Lord, nga pagdayaw, pagsimba, at paghimaya. Siningad law, Lord, sa imo lang git. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Let's clap for the Lord. Let us all stand as we